Oh. <laughs> that was. <laughs> what happened? Just making like 30k while going on toilet. Let's crush. Opening the 9 8 and. No, sorry. He opens, we call. And we're going to be calling a bet. Hoping for an 8 or 9. Thank you. Um, he checks, we bet, most likely bluffs, queen jack, jack 10, jack 10 clubs, we can float on the flop, right? Uh, we're going to be very polarized, so I don't have like protection bets, I'm not going to be betting ace 8 here, so I go big or check. Yeah, also, it's this range is going to have easy calls against the small sizing. But let's say if he has now 10-9, if he has jack-9, ace-9, like, I apply way more pressure, which is also good for my bluffs, right? And if he has something like a nut flush draw or a king, I, I get way more value from him. So this is how you should approach these spots. Oh my god, this spot is insane in the 10k. I mean, with my image, I actually really don't mind calling this off. He flats this guy. There's 40, 50k in the middle. He could easily be jamming eights and sevens. He's from, where is he from? From Austria. Ace queens. He has full range ace queen. Some tens. He might have some tens. Nah, I can't afford this. I can't afford this. Oh, tens. It's really just tens. It's like one hand. Oh my god. Oh my god, and we actually win this one. Yeah. It's just one of these spots where I think... I'm gonna put this in Equilab, but I don't think it's even close. Like, if he jams tens, I just, I just see pocket eights in his range as well. Um... Flatting the king seven suited against Niklas. You want to be flatting relatively wide. Um, from the small blind, especially with the suited kings. It's pretty much the bottom king seven, king eight suited. Against later positions, I would also mix in king five and king six suited. Mm. Not loving it against the sizing. Huh. It's interesting. And I said off, I think. Do we jam or do we call? It's actually pretty close. Alright, we got a seven, my friend. Wow, what a big pot chat in the 10k. And here we go. We just fold. Oh, it's a six spot. Against him, if he jams, it's really close. Oh. I mean, we get a very good price, obviously, when someone jams 12 big blinds. Then additionally, he's gonna have... Let's first check his stack size. Does he, is he incentivized? Yeah, he's nine. Yeah, yeah, he's 18. So technically, he's supposed to, right? If he does it, I don't know. He's supposed to reshuffle king, jack, king, queen, suited, ace, eight, ace, nine, suited, lower pairs. Yeah. Can't afford this. Seven is always coming. You see the 10, but you're right. Oh, 10 is life. 10 is life. No red card. Black card is good. Oh my, oh my fucking god. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, do we call this? We should, right? Nine big blinds. 
I mean, he's one of the shortest stack. Like, can you please jam an ace four suited, an ace five off, uh, maybe a queen jack even? Poker five is not too bad either. Green card is good. Why no three bet with a king queen? Well, your your goal is to keep the hands in that you dominate, right? King jack, king ten, king nine, queen jack, right? Even the queen jack. Um, if you have king eight suited, it's so much better to three bet. Still has playability. You make him forward king ten off, perhaps some king jack offs. Um, you make him forward queen jack offs, which has way for more way more um, forward equity. So if you have hands that you dominate a lot on his opening range, but you would make them 4 if you 3 bet you call. Of course, you don't want to be 3 betting 7 dues off because you make him forward 10-9 off. You still want to have playability. So somewhere in the middle of your calling range, right? You want to be calling like a king 5, king 6, king 7 suited. So calling a 3 betting a king 9 suited or a king 10 off is, is totally uh, viable here. I think Giraf is playing for a win in these spots. I think he's not afraid jamming. A little wider. <clears throat> All right, GG, my man. I'll defend the Queen Jack off. Oh, we have loads of bluffs here. Um, yeah, great river. You can even have jack eight, jack five suited that he opens on the button. Any kind of nine X hand. Definitely want to bet big. We perceive to have lots of busted draws. And of course, easy bet forward. We have lots of flushes that we can bet call with. And I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go, um, Wider as Queen Jack because I think some Jack tens might be checking back, right? <sighs> Queen ten off is going to be an easy call here. Blind versus blind. Now nine big blinds. Oh. Oh. Let's go, chat. Let's take them out like flies. All right, all right. Do not have big blinds. Good luck, my friend. What does he have? Nine pocket nines. GG. GG, we are on the final table chat. What an end. What an end. Woo! <laughs>we had jack three, we are not blocking any of the outs. Maybe would have made a flash. No, that's the first elimination. GG to Daniel Dwarves. Yeah, I think uh, Isaac is definitely capable of bluffing in these spots. So I think it's fine to fall back jam.
Oh! <laughs> that was... <laughs> what happened? Just making like 30k while going on toilet. Hey guys, we just added a bunch of new videos to the tournament masterclass around the population analysis where I've been diving deep into how population plays pre-flop and post-flop low stakes mid stakes and high stakes we recently finished adding everything around low stakes we now started adding mid stakes videos as well uh, up to 100 dollar tournaments and i teach how population plays pre-flop folding versus three bets four betting folding versus four bets c betting lots of different stats where i show you what you need to do without studying gto to in depth when you face certain uh, aggressions or when you face certain lines what is our counter response when should we bluff when should we lead a lot of turns when should we bluff less and we see that the four to three bets are relatively high which means people are not finding these four bit jams often enough are folding hands that's supposed to call supposed to be calling against three bets so this is definitely something where i would say population is still having major leaks on mid stakes and this is actually pretty sick value i think this has been one of our hottest updates over the last couple of years so you don't you definitely don't want to be missing that out uh, we put everything in the description so yeah if you're interested in um, increasing or upping your exploitative game then this is the place to go He makes the call and he's good. Wow, what a brave race here. Gotta give him credit for that. Gotta give him credit for that. He had king eight. And we have an easy call with the a7 off. Good luck, my friend. Eight or six for him to stay alive. GG. Good game. Uh, he jams pretty fast, chat. I think he doesn't have aces, and I think he's just gonna jam ace 10 suited. He's gonna jam lower pairs. I think I'm gonna call this. Yeah, it's less than 10 big blinds. I don't think we get to race forward. Hijack or small blind. We can still jam some pseudo broadways. Uh, I'm gonna call this. I really think he tanks a little bit longer with aces and kings. It makes it even better to call than I think. Oh, the eight? Oh, yeah, the eight is also live for him. Six doesn't help, GG. Oh my God, we have a sweat chat, we have a sweat. <laughs> Too bad that Charles Darwin is not opening. Good luck. Keep it clean. GG Victor. I'm gonna check all the river. Ah, we can actually uh, very bet against King Highs. We have perceived lots of like at exactly these hands: four, five, seven, eight. And he goes all in. Oh my god. Isaac was bluffing. Oh my god. I'm so curious what to see what, what was happening. And we're all all in. 8-6 eight, eight, off against King Doos off. 5. 8 or 6. Ah oh no, only the 8. He had 2 pair. Didn't see that. Black card is good. Black card is good, chat. Ah. 
just to check. Queen 7 against 10-4, another attempt to double up for. I've seen the craziest comebacks. And another all in. Kings and Jack 10. Oh my god, you have Jack 10, <laughs> Jack 10 off for three big blinds, and you're like pretty much having the nuts, right? Blind versus blind. And this guy wakes up with pocket kings. All right, Charles Darwin, we got heads up. Let's fucking go, chat. Oh, that's exciting. I love that shit. We got a game, my boy. Ah, with a back to flush drawn, gonna be betting it. I feel like we have to triple this now. I'm definitely going to second. We need to airball this board Just with our club hands. Hope that the club gets there. Yep. All right. We're going to send it. Yeah? He's going to have lots of auto forts like Queen X and, and Spades, even A6 and Spades. And uh, this is uh, like a, a spot where we were mostly going to be betting really large or we don't bet. Um, I either have a jack, a flush or nothing, right? And if he has ace, five and hearts, he's just gonna be like hating his life. We're just gonna be calling again on the turn. Surely he's gonna have some like king high flushes, but he's gonna have lots of call, call forward hands. Uh, this is, I think, a mandatory bluff on this board texture, given our range advantage. Well, flush is uh, no bueno. I'm definitely gonna raise the A7 off. I don't know if shot on value game against uh, King Highs. We could maybe even. I have a pretty decent ace high. I would forward ace nine, ace 10, ace jack. I think ace seven is not bad because he floats jack 10, king jack, king 10, 10, nine spades, I think. Um, if he has those, what is he limb calling with? It's probably just like these combos. King jack, king 10 offs, king nine offs, jack 10 offs. Oh my god, a6. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah. I mean, he can value bet any pair against our ace highs, right? That's just a uh, tilting spot. I mean, if we raise it, we have to call off. That's the problem. But I think I'm still going to be raising it. He's going to have weaker um, jack x hands, 10 x hands. It's just a hand we. If he jams, we need to gamble. 
And this is also a nice hand to go for triple barrel. He's not going to have a lot of king, he's going to have a lot of 9x, 6x, that he's going to be playing call, call. Yeah, I'm going to be sending this hand. Or we just make the nuts. Still gonna have like 10 eights and seven eights and seven five suiteds that I think he's gonna be bluffing with. And I think he jams any king for value on the river. So I'm just gonna call it. I also think he expects me to jam a lot of flush draws. So I think he's going to be, of course, having his bluffs here. And uh, the spades is pretty much irrelevant. Unless he has. Um, 7, 8 in uh, spades. Yeah, it's a bit of an unfortunate, unfortunate river. <laughs> he can literally have zero, right? Just trying to represent an ace high kind of slow play. Uh, ace high protection bet, queen high protection bet. Maybe he goes banana. Oh my fucking god, this is insane. Okay, this is actually a bet, one of the better rivers. Now we're trying to sell him the story that we get him trying to get him off a split, right? He might jam actually. He could also try to get off get off get off us a split. <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> Let's go! Oh sick pot. I, I can't blame him. I can't blame him. I'm probably so out of line in this spot. <laughs> what a sick spot. I think I'm gonna race this turn if he bets again. Look straight, which is good. Oh, what is this river? Oh, the problem is he has so many club check XC bet cards. I would have jammed like a king, five, three, deuce. Uh, that's pretty bad. And I think he bet forwards a lot of single 10x hands already on the, on the, and he knows we can trap. Uh, I got two pair. Oh, he actually had lots of equity on the turn. Well, it's all right, it's all right, that's all right. Well, it's all right, it's all right, that's all right. big on the turn so we can jam the river that's a good river
Oh my fucking god. I mean, if he blasts me, then I, I prefer calling a queen nine here or king queen. I think ace is a pr really terrible bluff catcher, actually. <sighs> Sick. That was a crazy hand and in the next couple of days I'm going to be uploading an analysis where I'll be diving deep into what we're supposed to do pre-flop. Is Aces an open race? Is it a limp? Uh, what is Charles Darwin supposed to do against our limping range? What hands do we open race? What hands do we limp? Then continuing on the flop. And then of course, more importantly, what everyone wants to know, is it supposed to be a value bet on the river? Do we bet half pot? Are we going all in? Are we supposed to call it off against an all-in? Which hands can Charles Darwin have in the first place? What are his bluffs? So yeah, all of these questions are going to be answered. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Otherwise, you're going to miss it. That would be pretty stupid. It's going to be a ton of value. So see you guys in the next couple of days where I'll be providing you a full analysis of this pretty sick hand. King Jack Sears going to limb caught. Base nine off. We need to hit. Ah, uh, it's not looking good. King or Jack. Oh, clap for the split. Clap for the split. No black card. Uh, okay, GG. GG, my man. He played it very well. Well, second for 235k. Not too bad either, chat. Tried my best.